The theme of setback in Blood Out, personal setback, Michael struggles with Hector Gonzalez, select frames. So we're now entering the scene where, where the people are going to uh, crowd around uh, for the blood match. And these and this is the bulk of how these people look. You know, there's no sophistication. There's uh, it's a huge contrast to the environment that you see with Arturo. And so, uh, sure, a blood match is not going to be a bunch of people with suits and things like that. However, even millionaires um, and billionaires, when they go to a boxing ring, they dress up in suits. They dress up in their best and finest or whatever. Everybody else doesn't have that kind of access. But even the women dress up really nice or whatever. But this is what we're dealing with. This is the 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 extent of the viewing audience uh, and the environment and the level. And Zed and Elias want to get out of this level and get at and get to the level of Arturo so they can leisurely sit down and um, conduct business at the pool on the phone. So this is where Zed, now we see Zed and Elias again, and then this is Arturo and they're dressed in their suits, of course, right? Arturo is mocking Elias and Zed, you know, that you, you have uh, uh, basically a scratch of earth, but it is Zed and Elias who wants Arturo's scratch of earth. It's kind of interesting how Arturo is laughing at them um, and, you know, he can do so from a space of, I guess, uh, riches beyond uh, his imagination, as Elias puts it, that his riches create such a safe space for him that he can mock those who want to do better in life, who want to move up the, the drug dealing ladder, you know, so to speak, right? And that uh, he's basically saying it's just a scratch of earth. Here it is. You want my scratch of earth, but you're not really capable of having my scratch of earth. So that's why he's basically snickering and, you know, kind of mocking and taunting and, you know, suggesting that his his general, Hector Gonzalez, has never lost. And um, um, And anyone who goes up against him is going to um feel significant pain in a sense so we still have this acting where anya uh tells him to win tonight and to wait for her signal and that this whole thing is bigger than you so do keep that in mind of course she gives him a kiss because that's what you do when you are acting out of role right but this is where I thought it was very interesting that we see Michael actually doing sit-ups. He's preparing for the fight. Whereas we didn't see this throughout the movie when he goes and fights the Indigo crew or when he has to prove himself at the safe house or any other area of the film. There is no preparation. He just taps into the skill set that he already has and just applies it, right? But he's, I think he's worried because remember, he has no clue about Hector Gonzalez. And if we're calling something a blood match, we know that the enemy, the opponent has greater skill than any of the types of skills that Michael uh, encountered on the ground, on the, in the streets. This has to be something bigger than what he's already been encountering. So that means that he has no knowledge of Hector Gonzalez. He doesn't spend enough time with uh, Squat or Michael or even Elias to find out even more about it because Elias focuses on the money aspect of winning, right? He doesn't focus on the skill set of the fighter. And so um, um, this is very interesting that we see him preparing to fight when we haven't seen him prepare to fight before. And so this is Squad uh, offering sort of like uh, what you might see with a boxer. And uh, it's confusing to Michael. Why would he think that Michael would care about this now when he's been old school the whole time?
So he looks at it. It's not worth anything. Uh, he, he doesn't want this kind of help. You know, uh, everybody in the movie kind of needs some kind of help. This is not the kind of help that he actually needs. And so what you see here, um, Arturo saying that we both want the same thing, control. Scratch of earth at all costs. And so, but his control is different from Zed and Elias's control because if they really had the kind of control to live the kind of life that Arturo lives, they wouldn't need to engage Arturo. They wouldn't need to to try to take his scratch of earth. So that means he. So that means that that they don't have the territory that they think they have that Arturo, they have to cross into Arturo's territory in order to get anything and have anything, right? Uh, we're not going to divide and conquer, we're going to conquer and divide. So so they want really his control of earth, but I, to me, I don't think it's just about the literal territory. They want the fruit of the labor. They want the money that comes with having that territory so they don't have to do all of this footwork. They're tired. They're very. They're basically tired of being foot soldiers. That's really what I perceive this is uh, to be. So these women come in. This is the extent of um, this environment and what to expect, of course. And I guess they are considered this sort of uh, battle between good and evil, black and white. So it's interesting how they choose these women right and uh right before this scene it was uh anthony saying that he needs to go find his sister she's missing and that he's going to go ghost and at the end of the uh movie we don't see An anthony i always wondered about anthony i really did i always wondered if he was an undercover cop i just something about him just turned me just kind of turned me into that thinking. But we have this entertainment. Everyone is surrounding the person in the middle, right? Remember that everyone crowds around the person in the middle and this belly dancer. And this is basically them all watching TV, being entertained by this belly dancer. And then uh, Arturo comes along and he sort of says, Hail Mars, son of Judo, Juno, God of War. But these are all watchers. So uh, Michael comes in like we will see in, in a boxing uh, event, right? Um, Anthony is at his back and squat is to his right. And both men enter the ring from their respective sides. So uh, he is respected. Here is Hector Gonzalez. He has a Spartan sort of uh, hat, right? And he is respected. He likes the hands on him, you know? He walks slowly enough for them to touch him, okay? And um, that is something that kind of spurs him on. So they're standing together. There's Arturo with the uh, cane and uh, they are standing together, but both parties don't know each other. They have no idea who the other is. And so, uh, but they're gonna fight now. Arturo, I mean, um, Hector has never lost a fight, so he's basing all of his strategies that he's going to use on Michael on that one idea. Uh, never mind, he doesn't know anything about Michael, he doesn't know anything about his skill set, and that there's a possibility that Michael could overtake him. But these are the two people who have come together uh, to fight a blood match for rich people. Keep that in mind, too. So there's that fire that comes up that basically, um, um, you know, suggests that the fight is about to happen. And he gets into his gear and I think to myself, why didn't he put that on right before? But he puts on this sort of Spartan hat ready to, to, um, to fight Michael. Now, this is where I thought it was very interesting because remember, Michael isn't the one being hit throughout the whole movie. He's doing all the hitting and knocking everybody down. But he comes across a person who is his match or maybe better than him, and he gets knocked down. And it's very surprising 
that remember he doesn't know this opponent uh this op opponent so that represents his setback setback in the knowledge in terms of not uh know that opponent so he doesn't know his skill set he doesn't know when he's going to throw a punch and the punch that he's throwing takes michael down uh so fast that he doesn't even realize he's down so this is michael down on the ground remember when he got on top of the other guy at the indigo safe house and he says you belong to the assassins it's michael now who's on the ground and now he's got to sort of figure out how to rebuild from the ground up you know in the same way that you would be in a setback how to rebuild from the ground up right once you hit that ground and that can be emotionally emotionally spiritually psychologically financially how do you now rebuild so he gets up on that one knee right because you know you got to get up in this environment there's no way that you can stay down okay but it is a task for him to get up to to get the strength to get up because had he come with the knowledge of his opponent he would have been better prepared but um he still fights back he struggles um uh but he realizes on some level that he doesn't have the kind of training that hector has and hector could just be um uh, fighting from pure ego because he has never lost a fight too that can be very energizing right so um michael finally gains the advantage and hits uh hector in such a way that it moves him and moves him to the other side of the ring and so the anger that comes through michael's face uh maybe comes from a number of places but it definitely comes from a place of ego i'm not quite sure he's thinking about his brother uh here i'm not quite sure he's thinking about all of the things he had to had to endure to get to this one uh place in the film but he's definitely not going to be undone he's not going to let hector take him down so he he is he has regained his strength he has overcome that minor setback he has some kind of clue now about who hector is and how he's going to take him down and so hector takes off that hat because he realizes that helmet that is not serving him any uh good and so now he he is really getting serious in his uh in his mind and then hector catches michael by the arm again michael has no clue he hasn't even had this sort of exposure to fighting before with the other men the other men that he's fought they've been just very low level people just they don't know how to fight and so those are kind of like easy fights it reminds me of ram um rocky remember when rocky um realized that many of the fights that he has he had endured were you know kind of fixed fights they were sort of easy wins and that he hasn't had a real fight with anybody and it took clubber lane to kind of shake him up and then that kind of left him depressed when he lost that fight and he had to go to apollo to bring him back and so this kind of reminds me of that because um rocky did not prepare for clubber lane and uh he he went on a promotion tour and he did a little, a little bit of running and everything and, and a little bit of uh showboating in terms of boxing but he did not train and then you saw the contrast between uh rocky's little training and clubber lane taking it very seriously and him training harder and so this is what happens when you don't know your enemy and you don't know what your enemy is capable of and you rely solely on the wins that you have had to date see in fighting the indigo guys and fighting the guy at the safe house and fighting everybody else uh you rack up these wins in your head that you're good but it isn't until you come across a person like this with uh with a different type of skill set and strength and he's still going to overtake him in the end but it's a struggle it's not something he didn't have to struggle with the other people that he fought throughout the film he's struggling with this one so this reminds me of that rocky clubber lane um situation and then he catches him by the neck right 
And so, um, uh, and this is where he throws him out of the ring and he has to, and this caught by the neck is like another type of setback in life, right? Because he's, he's cutting off his oxygen. Remember when we felt uh, that little bit of, of a reprieve from the writer director when uh, Michael is giving a woman, the homeless woman, some money and we felt a little bit of oxygen that we can breathe from all this fighting and violence and talk and things like that. And we can just kind of sit here and let Michael help this woman however he wants to help this woman with money. And we felt like it was oxygen for him to kind of rest and it was oxygen for her. Well, he's cutting off his oxygen here. He's cutting off his windpipe. He's cutting off his, his ability to breathe right through this fight. And so this is another bit of knowledge that Michael did not know, that he did not know this type of skill set. Sure, he might have, when he took down the guy in the Indigo safe house and he says, you now belong to the assassins, um, that kind of shut that guy down. But you don't see Michael putting his hands on somebody's neck. You don't see him putting his foot on somebody's neck or anything like that. And so that's not part of his his repertoire of skill sets and so when it's now when he now has to confront it in an in with an opponent it's you know kind of shocking to him so he ends up throwing him out of the ring michael has to get back into the ring all the people around him are chanting and shouting him on to help him get back into the ring so they can continue to fight because remember these are all watchers but michael ends up getting the advantage because Michael still knows his own skill set, right? And this guy doesn't know this skill set, but it's interesting that there was a chain there. And this is a warehouse, so you know you're going to have chains, of course. But he ends up getting the better of him, lands on him, on his neck. So whereas uh, Hector caught him by the neck, Michael is now catching Hector by the neck and uh, by the shoulders. And then Hector ends up tapping out because it's too hard, uh, which leaves Michael to win. So that means when Michael wins, he's overcoming his setback of lack of knowledge concerning Hector. And uh, he's overcoming the setback in terms of now winning the blood match, which now makes it possible for him to uh, stay in good with Zed and Elias. Had he lost this fight, who knows? um what would have happened it wasn't hector who felt like he had a lot to lose it was michael who felt like he had to uh, had a lot to lose because if he didn't win there might have been major consequences for him which could have led to death so they win zed is very happy uh elias is hugging uh anya right and then um it is Zed who's now going to tell Arturo that uh, we're going to take your whole empire. All right, so hopefully you were able to gain some insight from this lecture. Uh, please like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can visit my website, um, reginawhyfavors.com. You can always send me an email. Uh, Please purchase the book when it comes out. It's going to come out approximately uh, August 2021. I needed to make some changes to it and do some final editing. So the book title is Overcoming Setback, Five Keys for Entering and Exiting Correction. Thank you for listening to this audio. Have a great day.